So last time we talked about uh, the channel properties uh, and uh, to be able to complete the uh, link you need to now talk about receivers so that we can complete the link. So we know the certain properties of the transmitter, we know certain properties of the fiber and now we need to know the properties of the receiver so that now you can design a complete link. Right? So we are kind of almost getting to a, a, a link design. Right? Now uh, receivers. Uh, when we talked about lasers, semiconductor lasers, we already talked about what is the working principle of receivers. We said we are going to use a p-n junction again, so uh, p-n junction and you reverse bias the p-n junction, we reverse bias the p-n junction and when light falls in the uh, junction region, it creates, it creates electron hole pair and these electron hole pairs. Uh, these are the minority carriers that are created and because it is reverse biased they cross the junction and generate a current right and that's how uh, 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 de detection happens so the correlation is between the photon h nu of energy and the electron hole pair that gets generated and the electron hole pair propagates through the uh, it flows outside as a current and okay, so this direction of current is okay. Tell me what should be the direction of current? It is a reverse bias. So the electrons are supposed to be moving towards the positive side. So the current is supposed to be moving opposite. So this is this is the flow of uh, current here. Okay. So uh, we also have to remember that corresponding to your uh, uh, valence band and conduction band if your photon h nu has to be absorbed by the semiconductor what is the condition need that needs to be satisfied this h nu must be greater than uh, band gap so h nu must be greater than eg or hc by lambda must be greater than eg or your lambda should be less than eg uh, sorry hc by eg right so for a given semiconductor there is a certain range of wavelengths that are possible where the semiconductor will then act as a detector okay um, now there are some basic definitions uh, one is the uh, uh, what is called as a responsivity of uh, the semiconductor which means that let's say you're going with a certain power how much is the current so this p in is optical power you're talking about the input to the photodetector photodetector is actually a transducer input is optical power output is electrical current right so the conversion factor is your responsivity output current divided by uh, input power is your responsivity rd rd indicating that this is the responsivity of the detector okay so that is something that uh, is characterized for a given photodetector now there is also one more term that is relevant for a photodetector which is quantum efficiency. Now quantum efficiency simply tells you the rate at which the electrons are generated to the rate at which the photons are incident. Every photon that is incidenting need not necessarily create an electron hole pair. If one photon is creating one electron hole pair the quantum efficiency is 1 in, in unit time then the quantum efficiency is 1 but need not be 1 right. So, the way to define quantum efficiency is how much what is the rate at which the electrons are generated to the rate at which the photons are incident in the system. So, here we are completely doing a particle picture we are just talk, talking about photon which makes it also uh, important to understand that the detector is sensitive to intensity detector is not sensitive to field because photon the moment you say photon you are talking about energy right number of photons is related to the energy uh, and, and that means you are talking about the intensity of light which means that this kind of detector is not cannot detect phase it can detect it cannot detect field it can detect only intensity it can detect only mod e square which is intensity okay. Um, but nevertheless uh, intensity modulation direct detection systems require detection of intensity only most of our applications require intensity only. So, the way the quantum efficiency is uh, defined is you are you are trying to get uh, 
I p by q will be the rate at which the electrons are generated where I p is a photo current right. So, this is the photo current I p divided by q because that will give you the number of electrons divided by the photon incidence rates if the power is in uh, p, p divided by h nu will give you the uh, number of photons per unit time ok. And so, this can be rewritten as h nu divided by q times I p by p n which is R d. So, this is a very important relation the quantum efficiency is decided by these parameters. Uh, one can actually simplify this and write this as R d s eta q divided by h nu. Why am I writing about R d? Responsivity is the external parameter that I can measure whereas, quantum efficiency is what is happening internally in the system right. So, I measurable is responsivity I can always measure responsivity in the lab I can put in a certain power I can measure the current that is coming out of the system I can measure responsivity. What I am trying to do is to now link that responsivity to the internal process that is happening in the system. So, then the responsivity is eta q divided by h nu because this is eta and h is a constant nu is a variable which is c by lambda and q is a constant. So, you can write this in terms of this this all these constants will work out to be 1.24 if lambda is in micrometer. So, this constants will work out to be so R d is actually equal to eta lambda by 1.24 and uh, what is the dimension of R d? Units of R d it should be ampere per watt not watt per ampere ampere per watt or you write it in terms of milli ampere per milli watt or something like that because these are the order of magnitudes you typically get. But it turns out that this responsivity the ampere per, per watt number is proportional to lambda. So, why does it increase with lambda? Physically why, why do you see this I mean as you are as you go to longer wavelengths turns out that the responsivity is going on increasing. Of course, by uh, before I forget uh, this formula is hold holding good only if lambda is in micrometer. So, when you use that formula you have to be careful otherwise you can always substitute these constants and find out that is not a big problem. So, the question is physically fundamentally how do we understand this process it means that a given detector gives you more response or more photo current for the same power it is giving you more photo current at la longer wavelengths. Uh, why do you think that is happening? Photon energy reduces as lambda increases photon energy reduces or increases as you increase lambda photon energy energy per photon will start reducing for a given power then the number of photons you will have will increase right because uh, the photon incidence rate p in by h nu right as your lambda goes high frequency goes low energy per photon reduces. So, the number of photons that are available for a given power that will start increasing which means for the same power more photons are incident when you are having a longer wavelength and when more photons are incident for a given the same quantum efficiency the, the photo current will start increasing. What is the upper limit of lambda? Can I keep on increasing lambda and keep on getting better and better responsivity? No, why? E g it should be lambda should be respecting the E g condition h c by lambda should be always h nu should be always greater than E g. So, there is a cut off upper cut off for your lambda ok. So, if I take the responsivity so this is a data sheet number. So, I have taken the uh, data sheet oh so this was the cutoff wavelength so the cutoff wavelength is given by e g that is what we wrote earlier. This is a commercial uh, uh, photo detector from a very popular company uh, Thor Labs which sells uh, all these optical components. So, this is the data sheet from their website and this is a indium gallium arsenide detector right and this is a part number is whatever this number is right and uh, its responsivity this is what you will see in a data sheet ok. So, this is the upper cutoff somewhere here for the lambda, but 1500 nanometer if you look at it 
its responsivity is about 1.1 1 .1 or 1550 nanometer is also about 1.1. 1 .1. So, R d for an in gas detector is roughly 1.1. 1 .1. Um, if I am using a 1300 nanometer, now the responsivity is dropped down is increasing with lambda right. So, it was increasing with lambda up to a certain particular value and then it started dropping down because the energy was not sufficient enough to cross the band gap. So, uh, this also plays an important factor in deciding which wavelength to use right and uh, when you are doing a link design there are several factors that will come into play. Uh, we talked about uh, uh, attenuation in the fiber, we talked about dispersion, we talked about zero dispersion. One of the factors is now is my de detector response is higher at 1550 or lower at 15. So, it turns out that it is nice for 1550 the detector is responding better, the in gas detector is be responding better. So, we typically use in gas. Uh, what about 800 nanometer? You know there are three bands of communication that we typically use in optical fiber. One is 800 nanometer band, then there is 1300 nanometer band, then there is 1550 nanometer band. Can I use uh, the same detector for 1550 and 1300? I can because you know the responsivity has changed. So, if my link budget will slightly change because of that responsivity, but I do not have to change my detector. But if I try to decide to operate the same link at 800 nanometer, that is not possible because my responsivity is very, very low. So, for 800 and for visible light, the detector used is silicon. Silicon is an indirect band gap material, but indirect band gap material can work as a detector. It cannot work as a source, but it can work as a detector, right. So, for 800 nanometer, this marked already even there, the responsivity is 0 0.475. It is actually quite poor at 800 nanometer. It peaks at about 1000 nanometer. It is even at the peak, the silicon detector is uh, having a responsivity of only 0.55. It is again from the Thor Labs website. So, in general, uh, silicon is all what you can use for visible, but its responsivity is greatly varying across the visible and you have to worry about its responsivity in your uh, link design. Because the current that this detector can generate is based on for the same power a silicon detector uh, will uh, generate different currents for different wavelengths that is what it means. right? Why do you think in general the responsivity of silicon is poor when compared to uh, indium gallium arsenide? I have already given you a hint if you are paying attention. Silicon is an ind indirect band gap material. Number of electron hole pairs it can generate that is uh, very different. Uh, it can be quantified in terms of absorption coefficient of silicon that is what we are going to do now. So, this is what something to understand 800 nanometer links require silicon detector which has poorer responsivity when compared to 1300 or 1550 nanometer link. Uh, so, how do you link it to the uh, ab absorption coefficient of the material? So, let us go back and look at the whole idea again. So, in your p n junction right, uh, even before we go to a p n junction, let us take a slab of width w. Okay. You are sending a certain uh, input power, you get a certain transmitted power and if the incoming photon energy is greater than the band gap, the transmitted power is always less than the uh, incident power. I can quantify that through transmitted power is equal to exponential e power minus alpha w p n. Uh, where alpha is now the absorption coefficient, power absorption coefficient per unit length of the material. Okay. So, you would want if, if this slab is going to work as a detector, would you want this e power minus alpha w to be large or you want that to be small number? You want the transmitted power to be almost 0, you want all the power to be absorbed or in other words you can say that you want your p t r to be much 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 smaller than p input, which means that this number should be large small 
very very small only then you can have so which means e power minus alpha w you want it to be very small now how do you make it small this coefficient alpha should be large w should be large so you need to have a very large width and you need to have a very large absorption coefficient so you can now uh, relate that to the quantum efficiency remember what was quantum efficiency the rate at which electrons are generated to the rate at which photons are incident another way of quantifying that is absorbed power by incident power okay so absorbed power is 1 minus e power 1 minus of this and incident power is p in so this is 1 minus e power eta is actually equal to 1 minus e power minus alpha w and you want your eta to be ideal eta should be 1 which means as we discussed earlier e, e power alpha w should be a uh, small number which means that if my alpha w is much larger than 0 eta becomes 1. So, your responsivity formula what we wrote down, we wrote it down as uh, eta times lambda by 1.24, this eta I can replace it by 1 minus e power minus alpha w. Uh, why are we saying this? We are saying this to say that you know that what you saw in the data sheet that was R d versus lambda. Now, that R d versus lambda is actually decided by the way they make the detector. So, every detector you have to actually look at what is this R d versus lambda, it may not be universally true. But you know that if your width is beyond a certain number, then your alpha w becomes much uh, larger than 0, then eta becomes 1. So, for so long as your width is large, so long as your width of the absorbing region is large, between manufacturer to manufacturer it may not be very different. Okay. So, every manufacturer will try to make this absorption coefficient times the width to be a number which is large than much larger than 0. So, that you get eta is equal to 1 and once you have eta equal to 1 you have lambda by 1.24 as my responsivity. Now, how do you make the width large? What is the width we are talking about in a p-n junction now? Width of the depletion layer. How do you make the width of the depletion layer large? you can increase a reverse bias, but how long, how far can you increase a reverse bias until the breakdown voltage, beyond that you cannot increase the width. So, a regular p n junction there is only a limit up to which you can increase your w, okay. that is a limitation for a regular p n junction. 